and welcome back to the Struggle Security YouTube channel, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. If this is your first time here, I want you to hit the bell, hit the subscribe button so you can come back for more and more of this type of content. Today, we're doing something different. Ah, that lovely. <laughs> I'm introducing a new title or a new series called The Hacking History. I think this is very important to you all because we can go over some of those very important, very impactful hacking incidents that happened in the past. And I think that this would be very valuable to people who, again, are newer to cybersecurity or transitioning into the cybersecurity field. Why do I want to do this series? When a large hacking event happens, it becomes more difficult to disseminate what is the actual events, right? What actually happened and the clickbait, right? From all of the gossip websites and whatnot and the fake news. So that's part of the reason why I want to have this. And again, this series will focus on what is the actual true information and how you can apply this to your current cybersecurity career. So the next question is, why is understanding the history of malicious hacking incidents, why is it important for beginners? Why is it important for people who are coming into the field? Those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So that comes from Winston Churchill, who paraphrases that from a gentleman named George Sadayana, right? He's, um, I believe, an English philosopher. So learning from the history of hacking allows you as a cybersecurity professional to better defend against those hacks in the future. I don't know how often I see a old operating system or some type of antiquated environment where old hacks still work in those environments. That's a little bit of introduction to the series. So let's jump right into it, talking about Triton or Trisis. So what is it, right? That's the first question. What is it? I wanna give you a brief overview. We're here in the fall of 2017, a malware or malicious software was discovered in the Middle Eastern industrial facility. And it was discovered to be able to take over a, what you call a safety instrument system or a safety system, pretty much uh, that is directed and targeted towards a type of tech, tech technology by Schneider Electric. Um, and that technology or that product was called a Triconics. And the Triconics is what you call a safety instrument system. Right? Some of this jargon and some of these, these, these words might sound foreign to you. This is actually my specialization. So I specialize in cybersecurity for industrial environment. I don't know if you notice my shirt here. It says white hat, black hat, hard hat, sans ICS, right? So this is kind of like that industrial cybersecurity with the white hat and the black hat hackers. It kind of combines all of that. So back to the incident, right? So there was malware found within an industrial environment in the Middle East that was able to take over safety and instrumented systems. Next question might be, what are safety systems? Because you don't run into these in regular enterprise environments. And I take this from a blog and I will, or a white white paper where I will reference in the resources. It says that safety controllers or safety in, in, instrumented systems are deployed to provide life stopping logic. These may include mechanisms to stop rotating machinery with a dangerous condition is detected or stop inflow or heating of gases when a dangerous temperature, pressure, or other potentially life-threatening conditions exist. So when I think of ICS and OT cybersecurity, you can think of these types of systems. And probably the best way I would describe this flavor of cybersecurity is cyber physical joint. Individual might press a button on a keypad or something, and that might cause some type of physical action that happens in the real world. Someone who might be running a trolley, right? That person is pushing or utilizing that technology in order to move a particular vehicle. It's that cyber and physical interaction is the way, the best way that I can describe this, this type of ICS OT. So why was this event important to the hacking history? Like, why did I bring this up? Um, and I think that it's important because as you think about this, um, typically when you think of hacking, you don't think of things that can affect the life of individuals. You think of maybe a phishing email that might steal social security cards or social security numbers or people's personal information or electrical or health records from the past or something about procedures, but you don't typically think of a cybersecurity events that will affect the life of individuals. And the reason why this hack was so integral or so kind of revolutionary is that targeting sys or safety instrument equipment um, specifically represents a dangerous evolution within ics computer network attacks potential impacts include equipment damage system downtime and potentially loss of life so that answers the question of why i think it's important is because loss of life typically isn't something that you think of as um, an impact that comes from cybersecurity attacks and cybersecurity events 
Um, now, I don't want to go so deep into the details here because there's so much information that's provided. So I'm going to give you all some resources within the description of, of this video where you can get down deeper into what actually happened. What was the um, initial attack vector? How did the attacker move laterally to different systems? Um, and maybe even some attribution like who did this or who was it attributed to for this particular negative action? What is another reason why this is important? I can kind of think of some of my own background where shortly after college, I jumped right into the automotive field and was working as an electrical engineer straight out of undergrad. And I worked for an automotive manufacturer and this organization had particular plants that had industrial control systems within them. Um, they had assembly lines where um, vehicle parts would be going down the line at a certain speed um, and they would stop at certain points where individuals, people would pull these these parts down and pretty much assemble the vehicles together. Right. With all of these parts that came down the line. This is another example of these industrial control systems that occur within industrial environments. So I'm thinking about this. Right. And the thing about it is that within these uh, plant systems or these plant environments, this automotive plant, it also has safety instrumented systems in it. It has safety systems within it to make sure that this process doesn't go outside the lines of a safe condition. So think about it, right? If a hacker got into an automotive environment, an automotive plant, they could get to the safety safety systems and be able to stop it from controlling the speed of the parts coming down the assembly line. So they take down that safety system and who knows what could happen. It could be a, it, an event where parts start whizzing down the line at uncontrollable speeds and cause a lot of damage. So, you know, when I think about it, I kind of think about the, that, that plant life that I used to be in within the automotive environment, where if a hacker got into that environment, it would be very impactful from a safety condition for people. Hopefully this has been valuable to you and I do more and more of these. Tell me if you all want to know some more information about these events so I can make volume two even more interesting to you all. And hopefully, again, this has been valuable to you where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity.